younger children when the bones or joints are still soft. And for older children, bone or joint are stiff, bony surgery may be necessary. Now, Elizarov offers an alternative option where you gradually correct the deformities with minimal injury to the bone, even if the joints are stiff. Okay? However, those published in the literature using Elizarov are very mixed. Different types of frame, there are different types of configuration, constraint, no constraint, or even semi-constraint. And the method, whether pure stretching, whether you do some soft tissue release, or whether you do osteotomy, those are quite mixed. These are some examples. Yeah? The left, multiple soft tissue releases. So the x fix is sort of holding it in position. And the right side, an example of a very fully constrained external fixator. So it's a mixture, so difficult to evaluate the outcome. Now for us, we have been using a quite standard configuration for the last 10 years with a minimal modification so far to address all the three major components of club foot deformity. The characteristic of the frame we use is, is constrained, it's fully hinged. There is no soft tissue release or surgery or osteotomy in addition to the stretching. And we started for children as early as one year old. Okay? So the points of fixation are the tibia, the calcaneum, and the metatarsus. I'm going to try to show some details of what we do here. To correct the adduction is mainly between the metatarsus and the calcaneum. We stretch over here, so it goes through the least strength joint and also the Chopard joint. Various correction, we are stretching between the tibia and the calcaneum. So this direction is like this, and it goes through the ankle and the subtalar joint. Then for equinus, yeah, it is between the metatarsus calcaneum complex and the tibia. Now this is going through an axis, an intermalleolar axis, unlike the other two, where the hinge is on the lateral side. So we use the anterior distracting or compression element to achieve this. Now another way to look at this is using this. Okay? This is adduction correction. So the medial column, you are stretched. Yeah? And then the stretching tissue are the columns here, the Chopard and Lee Frank joint. And then you notice during this procedure, yeah, when you stretch the medial side, the forefoot, which is in adduction, is simultaneously corrected to more neutral. It's the balancing of stretching the medial side. Then another way, the same correction. Yeah? So you do this stretching on the medial side. And not only the medial side is being stretched, even the lateral side, in the calcaneum, the cuboid area, is also being the main difference compared to Ponsetti method where you have to compress the lateral side is hinged on the lateral side when you stretch. Whereas Elizarov, your hinge is here. So across the whole structure, it is being stretched. The foot becomes longer. Now, another thing is this axis. Yeah? By this stretching, it goes into neutral from adduction. Now, this is easier to understand various deformity. The medial column, you bring it down, okay, all the way until neutral. The calcaneum became straight. And the stretching part, medial, and to a lesser extent, the lateral side as well. Okay. And for equinus, now equinus, it depends on the transmalleolar axis. Okay. So you stretch from the front to pull it up. And the stretching components are basically, again, ankle and the subtalar joint at the back there. So now we have already this constraint, this uh, construct. How do we fix it onto the bone? The first wire we usually insert by finger. We want to make sure that we fix the calcaneum. You push it in using your finger. And then you fix it onto the half ring or 5-8 ring. The second one, you are quite sure you can use your power drill. Okay? After, fixing, after putting the first ring, usually we take an image intensifier just to be sure it is in the calcaneum. Okay? So after that, when you have two wires over the calcaneum, then you go to the metatarsus. One wire over the fifth metatarsus and one wire over the first metatarsus. Well, with that, we go to the tibia. The tibia will position in such a way that on the AP, on the lateral view, it is perpendicular to the tibia bone. Okay? It may not be exactly in the center, but it has to be perpendicular to anchor and provide the anchorage for all the correction. 
This is just our most recent case we do on the 17-year-old boy with the uh, Shakut merit tooth deformity. It developed over the past four and five years and it's quite stiff. So we decided to do an approach stretching everything. Then maybe on the removal, we can do the fine tuning and see what other structures we need to address. So we do on both sides, we construct the frame. And once the frame is constructed, the element you need is very little. You are actually fixing two wires, calcanium, two wires over the metatarsus and maybe a few half pins over the tibia. That's all. It's quite a fast procedure. So here, yeah, again, using a finger, push it in. This is a bit harder at 17 years old, but you can do that. Then you use a C-arm to check. It's definitely in the bone. Then you put a ring and you can drill the second wires through. And then you go to the top and you see it's important for hind foot has to be in the axis of the 5-8 ring that we use here. Then you first metatarsus, fifth metatarsus, then you go up to the tibia bone, AP lateral view, 90 degree to the bone. This in 17 years old, we use three half pin to get a better stability. Initially, we use two rings for the tibia, but subsequently, when we start to use minimum of one half pin in the younger children, we are able to get away with only one ring over the tibia anchorage. It's good enough. So now this, we did an evaluation on the early cases where we do arthrograph mixed group of patients in the early age. Yeah? So we noticed that the main deformities, all the three deformities, we are able to correct at least until neutral. The equinus, we can even do over correction. And uh, the only problem, residual adduction and flexion of the toes. This is something that we have not solved yet. Yeah? The toes sometimes go into flexion contracture. A few children, neuromuscular syndromes and all, we do a bit too early. Two years old, three years old, they are not walking yet, so we try to make it straight and then we hope that they can walk. It doesn't happen. It actually takes a long time for them to walk, so we probably should not do on these children too young. So this is a review that we've done. 14 children, 25 feet. So the mean age that time is three years. We do only a younger children at that time. So the follow-up, 4.5 years to 5.4 years. We group them into three groups. So these are the three groups, arthrogryphosis, this is CTEV, and this is myopathy. All of them have done postural lateral release and failed, a lot of scarring. And this is the recurrence that we need to do. So neuromuscular problem is quite bad. Club food, not too bad, and arthrogryphosis is actually quite good. Yeah. Now, after that, this evaluated for 0.5 to 5.5 years. Subsequently, we have a few other cases that we need to correct, but we correct in the same manner. This is one of few examples. This one-year-old boy, we suspect arthrogryphosis because many joints are stiff. At eight months, we try postural medial release. Cannot. Yeah, it's still recurred. So we use Elizarov at one year old. And we are able, it's so powerful that we are able to stretch it until the neutral position. Okay? This is two or three months after that. We take it off, put on the splint, but then during the following two years or so, one side recurred. So we use Elizarov again to straighten it up. Then after that, yeah, it remains with using of AFO. This picture is taken nine years old. Okay? It's a plantigrade grade neutral food. And at that time, we noticed the knee joint spontaneously fused. You get problem over the teeth, upper limb problem. So obviously, this is a syndrome. He has a some sort of syndrome that we cannot identify and it's not clear, not only arthrogryphosis, but he's able to walk without pain. Yeah? Now he's 12 years old and we still have follow up. The correction remains. On the x-ray, we know it is not normal. Yeah? Club foot deformities, the correlation with a normal x-ray with a function is not very close, but the main thing is it is functional, he can walk without support. This is five year old, another one. Bilateral, we did postural medial release. And bilaterally, it recurred but worse on the right side. Adduction, equinus, and varus. So we decided to improve the right side by doing this Elizarov method, stretching. At the end of procedure, we noticed the right side is a bit longer after our stretching. So we thought this may be short term, soft tissue, right? After a few months, it will go back. But then on follow up, nine years old now, the right side still. The uh, the site affected is still actually longer. So this is something that you don't get in Ponsati. During the period, few months of stretching, it may stimulate the bone, 
or even the, the bone basically to grow. So you get a food which is longer than what is supposed to be. So it is planting great food, he can walk, no need support. And this is another example, eight year old, bilateral, but the left side recurred. And this time, okay, again, yeah, same method. Now this film is not good, we are not sure whether it's in. So at least this one, this is okay. Okay. Then we put a ring and then the next one you put on top of the ring. You are very sure it is above this and usually it is good enough. So the hind foot put in neutral position, then you go for the metatarsus, then you go to the tibia. Now this is immediate post-op. Now you see the toes, yeah? we put an uh, ice cream stick over there. Yeah? Hopefully it can maintain to prevent contracture. But as usual, at the end there, the thing is missing and they they said if they try to find, they cannot find anything to correct that. And quite often our patients, the toes still yeah, have problem. So some cases we do this. We do over correction in equinus. Then after one month, we remove the whole thing, split it POP in more neutral position. And then you will notice that the toe, it is not so tight anymore. So in this case, we actually KIV that at the end there, we probably have to do a release of the flexor tendons then after that, in fact, it is not so tight. This is two years later on follow-up. There's still some tendency of the toes to be flexed, but it's not too tight. There's no ulceration, it's no pain, so we can get away with this. There's no surgery for that, although it's not so ideal. Now, we do have our problem. These are problems that persist after the frame removal. Six-year-old girl spinal bifida, they don't have that much of pain. So sometimes during correction, it's quite good in the sense they don't complain of pain. So this child, he had an ulceration on both sides, okay? Ulcer is still active, but we just put on the frame because otherwise, you will always walk on there, the ulcer will not heal. So we did this and we managed to get it corrected. Now, this girl splinting on the toes, no problem because not much of pain, okay? So now, after we remove that, she is not compliant with the AFO, then eventually it recurs two years later at about age eight years old. So the ulcer is healed, but all the three components of deformity recurred. So we proceed with the same procedure, exactly the same. Then we fix the whole thing and we correct. Now, she missed a follow-up. She's supposed to come, then she missed it, so she came one month later but she continued. The last component of correction is the Aquinas. She continued to correct the Aquinas and she came up to us like this. So it looks quite horrible. Then we try to see, remove the frame and see whether it becomes better. It looks like this. So we were thinking that we probably have to do some sort of osteotomy. Otherwise, the bone will just penetrate the skin. You have an ulcer. But on follow-up, you see, it just dropped down a bit and then just observe the outline of the soft tissue. It's actually not too bad. And again, there's no pain. So eventually, she actually just wear AFO. We did not need to do anything after this. And this is four years later at 12 years old. She's still using AFO this time. She's walking around, plenty great food. And that uh, overcorrection does not cause any problem. Yeah. So now, hinge constraint, Elizabeth external fixator, it is able to perform gradual correction without soft tissue surgery or bone procedure. This has been reported in Gupta and the group JPO 2013. But I think more surgeons still prefer to do some sort of osteotomy, UV, Y shape or supramalleolar in the older children. And uh, recommended by Ashraf here, also the same year, JPO is eight years and older. In our experience, we feel that it is possible to correct all the soft tissue without soft tissue release without osteotomy, even up to skeletal maturity. So the only thing that we learned from our series, especially initially, is you don't do them too early, especially those with neuromuscular problem. They are not walking. The parents are hopefully, they always attribute all the problems to the foot. And they expect that the foot being corrected, he might be able to walk earlier. This is probably not the case. It's probably better wait until they're able to walk and then only consider doing the correction. Don't do them too early. So the problem with the toes, there are a few literatures also mentioned the problem with this. Some of them will consider doing a soft tissue release on the time the frame is removed. And I think in Russia, it's common practice that during 
position of the frame, they do all the releases and put a K wire into each toe as a preventive measures. So we still do not have an actual recommendation and we try to to come up with a splint which is user friendly with the parents will be happy to put in on all the time. We feel that to do multiple tendon releases and K wire across the toes is a bit, I think, aggressive. And finally, splinting following successful correction of deformity is essential. We are stretching the soft tissue into neutral position. The underlying problem, the underlying pathology is still there. And the child is still growing. Everything will become tight and it will naturally go into deformity. So we must rely on this autosis to keep it in the neutral position if you want to maintain it that way. So the conclusion is that for us, we feel in children with stiff clubfoot deformity, Gradual correction with Elizarov external fixator using a fully constrained frame without soft tissue release or osteotomy can provide favorable outcome and avoid more extensive bone or soft tissue reconstruction. Thank you.